joined right now on realagriculture.com by Patrick Crampton. Patrick is the uh, head of business and product development with Agrosoma Biosciences. Welcome today, Patrick. Hi, Sean. Hey, Patrick. There is obviously a ton of interest right now in the biofuel industry. And traditionally, we always hear about uh, you know corn, uh, canola, uh, wheat uh, used for ethanol or biodiesel, whatever the crop type. But you're focused in a a, a crop type that is, I guess, new, or maybe not so new, but a new focus, and it's Carinata. What is Carinata? Great question, Sean, and you're right. There's lots of interest in the space, and, and so what Carinata is is really what we call an industrial oil seed crop, and, and by that I mean the, the oil produced from it is is basically not you know fit for you know human consumption. It truly is an industrial profile. And, uh, you know, through the work we've done has, you know, particular benefits when you look at biodiesel and, and especially the new emerging area around biojet fuel manufacturing. The crop itself is actually a relative of, of canola and the mustards that many growers would know today. Uh, it is a brassica species. However, unlike canola, brassica napis, condiment mustards, you know, oriental brown, which are your gencia types, this is a new type that's commonly called Ethiopian mustard, and so that's where the name Carinata comes from. It's it's Brassica Carinata. So, what makes it such a good fit for something like jet fuel? Yeah, so what makes Carinata a great fit for the jet fuel market is because of its industrial oil profile. You know, you compare it to a lot of the available oils today, really are food oils. They're bred for you know healthy, you know human consumption, etc. So it just makes sense. You know, they're optimized for that use. The the most popular oils are the healthier oils. Carinata itself, really, it's because of its the chain length. Uh, so it has a, a lot of the food oils would be an 18 carbon chain length. Carinata itself has predominantly a 22 C22 chain length. Because of that longer chain, what they do when they make jet fuel, they effectively fill the vegetable oil full of hydrogen to saturate it, <clears throat> and then they basically cut it up into smaller pieces to meet either a diesel fraction, a jet fuel fraction, or some lower value naphtha. And because of the longer chain length, uh, we're seeing some impressive results from different partners we're working with in terms of a higher overall yield of the diesel plus the jet fuel fa fraction. So. With a lot of these next, you know, what I would call next generation biofuel crops, you know, we hear lots about switchgrass. We've heard kind of about camelina. Yeah. How close is Carinata to reality as far as being... Uh, on the farm in Western Canada, that that's the exciting part, Sean. Because you know, Agrisoma, you know, we've we looked at a number of different cropping platforms, and and we really settled on Carinata as the biggest opportunity because it is a brassica. It's a relative of canola and the condiment mustards that a lot of growers are familiar with growing with today. And the work that uh, you know, Dr. Eric Johnson at Scott with Ag Canada has done. You know, shows, for example, that all of the selective herbicides registered for canola today look to work for Carinata. Uh, the agronomy is very similar, you know, response to fertility, these sorts of things, except for that fact that, you know, versus canola, it grows very well, tolerates a lot higher heat and, you know, a lot uh, lower moisture conditions. So we, we kind of term it from a farmer's perspective, kind of a drop-in crop where it can plug into the existing knowledge from an agronomic perspective, as well as even you go further down the value chain from a crushing you know industry perspective. It's it's a canola. Look, it, the seeds as large as your largest canola hybrid. Uh, it is yellow seeded, so it is visually distinguishable. But the crushing characteristics and the work we've done with uh, you know companies like POS out of Saskatoon show that it crushes very much like you would expect a brassica to. So. It, it's a new crop, it's a new type of mustard, but it fits into a pretty robust existing infrastructure that, that knows how to grow these brassic species. So it really work in the southern tips of Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, and Montana and the Dakotas? Yeah, it, it, precisely. And that's where, you know, this year we had 50 acres of pilot production, really a, a couple of, uh, in fact, older lines where there were some supplies available to get some pilot production uh, built to have some oil to play with in terms of proofing the value chain all the way through. One of those sites was in, in Frontier, Saskatchewan. We had 20 acres there, you know, performed very well. And it, it's it's a, a very waxy layered crop. So very, you look at the leaf in the rosette stage, looks very wrinkly, I actually feel it and it feels smooth to the touch. It has a very thick waxy layer, which is one of the main sort of drought tolerance mechanisms. Growers who know Gencia would see Carinata and see it sort of has more of a branching pattern like canola does. 
So that's something we're excited about is its ability to compensate. Mm -hmm. You know, these are tough environments. A lot of things can happen, reduced plant stands, you know, different events in the springtime. And this year with the moisture we had, actually, it showed very well how, you know, you could lose 20, 30 percent of your stand, yet the crop can compensate very well and you still get a good yield at the end. And so if current average year, what kind of yield are we thinking? I mean, our kind of, you know, there's a lot more work to be done on comparative assessments from, you know, Carinata versus a canola, because obviously we know with the moisture we've had the last number of years, you know, canola acres have been creeping further and further south. But, you know, I think growers who have experience would know that if you get into that heat and that hot spell in the middle of summer, you can get into trouble with canola, Carinata, you you wouldn't run into that issue, so to speak. So our kind of message is, you know, if you're growing 35, 40 bushel canola consistently, keep growing the canola. If you're into an area where canola can get a little bit more risky, you know, you'd be looking at Carinata. And, and these initial lines coming out are already showing, uh, you know, a 15, 20% yield advantage over the, the condiment mustards that are out there. So, yeah. you know, pretty substantial yield bump right out of the gate. What, how's the airline industry feel about this uh, project? You know, the, the airline industry, <clears throat> the, the sessions we've been through, through organizations like the ICAO, which is the uh, you know, International Commercial Aviation Organization, they're really taking a leadership approach. It's, it's a concentrated industry, so they can move things faster as, as an industry together. And they're really looking to set the stage in terms of their goal is working with really um, industrial crops, so non-food crops and really getting away from the sort of food versus you know fuel debate out there so they're you know i think they have a very practical view that obviously today the only scalable source of oil is food crops and they play a big role in the initial development and, and initial supply of this market but they're really focused on supplementing those supplies with uh, industrial crops like a camelina like a carinata that can grow in different areas grow on more marginal land and not really take directly away from food production. Okay, so if a farmer's interested in uh, possibly having some Carinata acres, what do they do? Yeah, so we're gearing up for, you know, a first launch this next year. And uh, basically we're, you know, at the crop production show uh, first week of January. You know, we'll have a booth. We're also on the agenda at the, uh, the mustard day. And uh, we plan to basically roll out our, our contracts at that point in time. So, you know, acres are to be determined based on seed supplies. We've actually got seed down in Chile right now. And, uh, you know, so we have to see uh, how that production is coming in terms of what's available. But, um, you know, we're, our goal this year is to get trial use out to a number of growers to try to grow the crop across a fairly broad geography across southern Saskatchewan and, and into southern Alberta as well. Okay, Patrick. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck with uh, the big first season here. Hey, thanks, Sean.